your feet and join in with us as we sing glory, glory, hallelujah.
God, we thank you for waking us this morning. We thank you for bringing us to this place.
has given us one more chance. Go to That's the same thing. In the midst of trouble, God is God. In the midst of good times, God is God. In the midst of bad times, God is God. And we just honor Him as God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We are the God of just being God. Don't you be so stiff that you can't honor Him as God. Your degree won't fix it. Your education won't get it. It's only God who can take away. Out of nowhere, He is the Almighty God by Himself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Kwai, for reminding us of who God is and how we ought to give Him glory. We ought not let this Sunday pass us by without glorifying God. And we ought not let this be the only Sunday that we worship Him in high praise. Matter of fact, we ought not let Sunday be the only day. It's a bad thing when you can worship Him on Sunday. Don't give it up for a moment. We ought to worship God for who He is. And what He has already done. I want to tell you, we serve the awesome and the amazing. I didn't say a awesome. A a awesome God means that there are other gods. But this direct article, the awesome God, sets them aside from anybody else. There is none like him. He is the almighty God. Hallelujah. And call your attention to the book of Acts one more again. Acts chapter 4. Today we'll be looking at verses 12 through 16. If you would stand for the word of God. Acts chapter 4. Verses 12 through 16. I hear you. You're saying that we, we ended with verse 12. On last week. But guess what? Verse 12 is the power pack verse. For all that Peter and John is doing in chapter 4. Chapter 4 of, of, of Acts. Amen. Amen. Verse 12. When you begin, you will find these words. Nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. Amen. They realized that they had been with Jesus. They realized that they had been with Jesus. And in seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, yes, sir. they could say nothing against it. Mm -hmm. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do with these men? All right. For they indeed... That a notable miracle, for indeed that a notable miracle has been done through them. This is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and they cannot deny it. I want to ask a question this morning. Have you been with Jesus? Have you been with Jesus? We need to understand that being with an individual may be a good thing, but we really need to be with Jesus. Some of you have tried to spend time with her, and she failed you. You really need to be with Jesus. Some of you have spent time with him. And he was there for a season and a season only. But you really need to be 
with Jesus. Some people have even tried being with them. And all of them have let you down. You really need to try to be with Jesus. Somebody have even tried it. And it didn't last just two seconds. But you need to try being with Jesus. When we look at the text in Acts chapter 4, we find as Peter and John were going up to the temple of beautiful to pray. When we look back and we look at the history, the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 that when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will be witnesses unto me, both and everywhere you go, in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and in the utmost parts of the world. I want to say to you, the church at her birth was the church at her best. All right, all right. When we look at the text, we declare, we find out that when Peter and John were on their way up to the temple, to the church, they were headed there to pray that there was a beggar there. Uh -huh. yeah. And this particular beggar is singled out by the author of Acts. He said this man was sitting at the gate called Beautiful. Uh -huh. And as he sat at the gate, he was asking for some money in his cup. But he really didn't need money in his cup. He needed a miracle in his body. Right. You see, we ask for things that we really don't need. We beg for things that we really don't have a handle on. And God, in his awesome, amazing wisdom, he knows what we need. Peter and John says that we don't have silver and gold. But that which I have, I give unto you. Peter speaks to this man and said, get up off your, your bottom and stand on your legs and walk. Yes, the Bible says immediately he gained strength in his legs, strength in his body. He went into the church leaping and shouting. Amen. But you know there are always some authorities there. Yeah. There are always some critics available. Yeah. There are always somebody who will find a way to criticize what God has already done. And many times it's those in power. Many times it's those in authority. And these Sanhedrin, those who were religious folk, find a problem. They found a problem with this man being healed. I told you all last week that people don't have problems with you as long as you bum and arrive. People don't have problems with you as long as you're asking for a nickel, quarter, or a dollar. Right. People really don't have a problem with you as long as they can do something for you. But the moment you get a dime over a dollar, they want to say, oh, she thinks she's something. And you ought to tell them, yes, I am, because God has delivered me and he has blessed me. When we move to chapter 4, we find... We find the Sanhedrin Council, those religious folk, are coming unto Peter and John, arrest him. Arrest them. Arrest the man and them because of the miracle that had taken place. Have anybody, anybody in your life have, have gotten down on you because you got something new? Or because you got healed? Or because... God had blessed you. Let me tell you, folk won't, won't they, they will shout you down. They will get to a point where they get satisfied with you limping. They get to a point where they're satisfied with you being crippled. They are satisfied with what you're going through. And they don't want you to make it. Preacher said to me, when I started preaching, I preached my first sermon. And when I preached my first sermon in 92, preacher came. First of all, he missed it. I contend that he didn't want to be there based on his statement. He said, man, you know, I, I couldn't make it. I couldn't be there. And later on, the truth came out. He said, well, I never saw you as a preacher. I always saw you as my armor bearer that will carry my briefcase, that will carry my towel, and carry my Bible. 
But when God elevates you and God moves in your life, somebody always wants you to carry their stuff and they don't want you to be one who will be on their level. Let me tell you, you got some friends that you, you got some people that you are friends to, but they are not your friends. I think I'll say that again. Now you got some people in your life that you are friends to, but they are not your friends. And you are better friends to them than they are to you because they're looking for their own personal gain and they're selfish and they don't want to support you. Is there anybody in the room who can testify that I've supported them over and over again and they never, ever, ever supported me? In the text, we find this man, and now he has strengthened his legs. Now he's jumping and he's celebrating. Now he has a new lease on life. But the religious folk want to shout him down. Don't you know, church, and not at this church, but the other church around right the corner down the street, there are some folk in church that whenever you try to do better with the Lord, they don't really want you to do better. They are satisfied with talking about you getting pregnant out of wedlock. They are satisfied with talking about you stuck out on drugs. They are satisfied talking about you when your marriage is on the rock. They are satisfied with it. You are better friends to them than they are to you. When you look at the man in the text, the man in the text, the man in the text is... He, he's messed up, he's broken up, so the Sanhedrin council began to question these men of God and ask them about what name have this miracle taken place? What name have you, and what authority have you done these things? You see, there's another thing that you need to understand. Sometimes the authorities want to be the ultimate authority. Sometimes those in charge want to want to press you down and hold you down. Sometimes those in authority don't want you to get above them. And I, God, deliver me from preachers who preach prosperity, but they're the only one prosperous. I say God deliver me from preachers who, who preach prosperity, but they're the only one prosperous. And when they preach it, they ought to make sure that the people are able to live it out. This man. Begging. This man now is healed. This man now is arrested. This man, the preachers are arrested. Let me just tell you, don't be so hard on preachers. Because sometimes preachers get in trouble for what is right. These preachers got in trouble for what is right. And if you really look into this thing, the church ought to be praying and not talking. When the man of God gets in trouble, we ought to call a prayer meeting like they did in Acts. The Bible says when Peter got locked up and then he came out, the church was praying, but they were surprised that God has delivered. Don't be surprised when God delivers. Just rejoice and say hallelujah to your name. Amen. Look at it. When we look at it, when we look at it, we find Peter saying he is bold enough to stand and he's saying that the stone that the builders rejected has now become the chief cornerstone. His name is Jesus. All right, all right. I mean, look at verse number 12. Peter says, let me be clear. Peter says, you need to understand that Jesus is the only name by which men should be saved. Jesus, the name of Jesus, is the only name by which men can be saved. And he goes on to elaborate on it. It is the only name under heaven. It is the only name on earth. It is the only name in heaven. It is the only name given among men by which we might be saved. Buddha can't get you saved. Muhammad can't get you saved. Confucius can't get you saved. Aristotle can't get you saved. It is the name of Jesus that gets us born again. There's no other name by which salvation is offered other than Jesus the Christ. He says, he says in the text, no other name among men. That means that there's no name under heaven other than Jesus Christ. No creature, no thing. No other creation, 
No other offspring other than Jesus Christ who can get us saved. My first point to you is today I see temptation. There is always temptation around us to worship somebody other than Jesus. There's temptation. There's always temptation. Now they have what are called crystals, where people worship crystals. They 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 work inanimate. They worship inanimate objects. Some people worship the sky. Some people worship the ground. People that get caught into into a pri being prisoners of war when they get back to the USA, they don't thank God. They bow down and and kiss the soil. Yeah. Yeah. Some people worship their children. Some people worship their grandchildren. Some people worship their spouse. Some people worship their family name. Let me just share with you. You need to understand that Jesus is the only one we must worship, yeah. Yeah. and it is Him alone that carries. Salvation. Yeah. Verse number 13. Verse number 13. He says, now, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. Mm -hmm. There's always temptation to depend on other things. But they had Holy Ghost boldness in Jesus Christ. Yeah. It says, now that they saw the boldness of Peter and John. They came to some conclusion. There's always a temptation to raise yourself up. There's always a temptation to make you think that you're somebody. Without Jesus, you are nobody. Matter of fact, without God, we are nothing but filthy rags in his sight at our very best. When you look at the preacher that stands before you, I'm just dressed up dirt. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm not really good dirt. I'm just dust because the Bible says when God scooped down into the dust of the ground, he created man. He didn't even use good dirt. He just used Dust. But because he's God, he can do anything with anybody any way he chooses to. The Bible says that when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they realized that there was a purpose in their life. Do you have a purpose in your life? Do you think you were just placed on planet Earth just to be here? Do you think you just placed on planet Earth to transition from here to the grave to heaven? Matter of fact, you got saved so you can reach other people. It says when they saw the boldness, my next point is there ought to be the testimony. There ought to be, yes, in the midst of your temptation, there ought to be a testimony. Brother Miles, put me down. Hit me down a little bit, Brother Miles. There ought to be a testimony. There ought to be, you ought to have a testimony. Whenever you have a test, you ought to come out with a testimony. The Bible says when they saw the boldness, of Peter and John, they came to the conclusion, now we know these guys are not educated. We know and we understand that these guys are untrained men. I want to say to you today, your critics and your authorities will see your boldness when you stand for the Lord. Make sure they see your boldness for the Lord. They don't need to see your arrogance. They don't need to see your pride. They don't need to see your selfishness. Because if you're going to lead people to Jesus Christ, you need to let them see your Holy Ghost boldness in the Lord. You can't force this Holy Ghost boldness. You can't make it happen. You need to make sure that you let it happen. Those of you who share Jesus Christ, don't force your way in. Just wait till God opens the door and then you step in. Because when God opens the door, God is able to do some things in the hearts of men that nobody else can do. It doesn't matter how smooth talking you are. When God opens the door, he can do more than you can do. Amen. The Bible says when they saw the boldness of these men, people are looking for people who are bold in the Holy Spirit. Who are bold in the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone who will stand up and recognize Jesus. The point is, we are publishing stuff on Facebook. We are publishing stuff on Twitter. We are publishing stuff that we are talking about ourselves. And we are talking about other things. We need to publish stuff about Jesus. If you want young people to give up their stupid ways, you need to talk to them about Jesus. I, I can say that young people can climb up fool's hills because I've been climbing up fool's hills. You know, when you're young, 
you you uh you bulletproof. <laughs> Everybody over forty can agree. Everybody under forty still trying to figure it out. Right. When, when you're young, you bulletproof. I mean, you can they can tell you that there's a lion outside. Don't go outside. Huh. I'm going anyhow. Matter of fact, they make statements like this. If you see me wrestling with the bear, I'll help the bear. <laughs> when you are young, you are bulletproof. It just says that you have not had the right experiences. Because when you have the right experiences, you know the best defense is to stay out of the way of trouble. Yes, yes. To move over, to sidestep, to not get involved. To Some people... Police officer pulls them over. What you want? You already in trouble. Why you pull me over? We're trying to teach children how to make it to the house. We're trying to teach children. It doesn't matter how bold you are. Doesn't matter how many people you know. It doesn't matter because if you don't have the right conversation, the right attitude, you won't make it to the house. Even people with the right conversation are not making it to the house. Yes, sir. That's why it's so important to, for the values that we had as children to be passed on to this generation. I don't know what the name of these generations anymore. It was Generation Z, Generation X, <laughs> the, the, the millennia. I don't know. I can't keep up anymore. But I do know your experiences in life must come to a point where you are smooth and you are cool under pressure. Yes, yes. Here I am, 60 years old. I couldn't grow an afro anymore if I tried. I, I mean, I, I can use all the sheen, all the grease, all the suffocate in town. It, it is done with. It's over with. It is finished. It has let go and it ain't coming back anymore. The bottom line is, even at 60, when I get pulled over, I'm turning on every dome light in the building. Every dome light in the car. I'm going to ride till I get to somewhere where there's a lit, air, lit area, and I'm going to take my hand. I used to tell young people, take your hand and put them on the steering wheel. Now I'm telling them, take your hand and bring them out the window. And you have to remember, every officer carries power. He has exclusive power, yes. meaning that he has authority. Yes. And he has dynamite power, dunamis power, meaning that he has explosive power. Yes. I'm telling you, his uniform, or her uniform, it doesn't matter if she's four foot one or not. When she walks up to your car and she says, driver's license and insurance, you ought to already have it out before she gets there. Right. Because the uniform says she has the authority. The bag says she has the authority. The, 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 the shoe says she has the authority. Or he has the authority. That is exclusive power. That is the authoritative power that's been given to them by a governing body. But then when she walks up to your car, he walks up to your car. Uh, Brother Thomas, you understand real well that he has dunamis power. That is explosive power. That is where we get the word dynamite. The gun says he has dunamis power. The blackjack says she has dunamis power. The handcuffs says they have dunamis power. And the Bible says that there is no authority created or other than the authority of God. Yes. So yes. Yes. They lock these men up for the wrong reason. Let me tell you, young folk, being locked up is better than the preacher saying ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Earth to earth. It's, it's so much better. Don't let your pride get you in trouble. Don't let your pride make you struggle. Don't, don't let your pride make you miss dinner tonight. The Bible says that these men were bold, but they were bold in the Lord. Your critics and your authorities will notice that you don't have the proper education. The text says, the text says, in verse number 13, the text declares that they saw that they were untrained and they were uneducated men. That means they hadn't been to seminary. Now, I didn't say don't go to seminary. Because you need some learning with your burning. 
Some people say, I'm getting it straight from the Bible. I'm getting it from God. But you got to know how to read the Bible, how to study the Bible, how to take words and parse the Bible. You need somebody to teach you how to deal with the Bible. But the Bible says that these men saw that Peter and John was uneducated. And they were untrained. They had not gone through Gamaliel's uh, seminary. They were untrained. They didn't have the necessary degree. But when you don't have the right degree, you ought to spend some time with the Lord. Big mama, big mama didn't have a third grade education. She didn't have a third grade education, but she knew how to call on God. She knew when her great-grandchildren had an issue, she knew how to call on God and, and God would answer her when he wouldn't answer us. Because see, God knows and God knew at the time, we're going to pray right now. And when God gets us out of trouble, after we promise him we ain't going to get in trouble anymore, he gets us out of trouble and then we get right back in trouble. Right. Yeah. But when Big Mama prays, God knows that when she prays, she's going to mean every word she says. And that's why parents can pray and say, God, at any cost, rescue my child. If you have to break them down, rescue my child. At any cost, Lord, bring them back into the Lord. The Bible said they were uneducated. They were untrained. It says to those of us in the room that we don't have to have degrees in order to talk about Jesus. We don't have to have certificates in order to tell men about Jesus. If we're going to turn this world back right side up, then we need to know that Jesus is Lord and we need to talk about him. We talk about everything else. We talk about C.J. Strauss. We talk about heart. We're able to talk about anything else. But we need to talk about Jesus. The text declares that these men were unlearned, they were untrained, but the people saw and they concluded that they had been with the Lord. Look at what it says. The Bible said they marveled. The Bible says that they were at awe. The Bible says that the men were amazed. This word marvel means they knew that they lacked training. They knew that they lacked education. They marveled. They were amazed. Is anyone amazed at you and how you present Jesus? Is anyone amazed at you? He said they were in awe. They were in awe. Now these are educated men looking at uneducated men and they are blown away. God can take you places you never thought you would go. God can do some things with you that you never thought he would do. Right. You have to yield yourself unto God. You need to be a testimony unto God. The Bible says that they were amazed because they saw their great power. When was the last time someone was amazed with you? When they're when they doing their thing and you walk up, do they offer you something? When they're acting out their ways, when you walk up, they expect you to join in? Or are they amazed with how far God has brought you and how you stand firm? The Bible says that they were bold in the Lord Jesus Christ. They were arrogant and the authorities knew that they lacked the education, but they looked at their power. I'm talking about a pure testimony. We are living testimony. We are not just church folk. We are Christians. We're not just showing up on Sunday. We are here to hear from, from the Lord. Yeah. We are not just here on Sunday and forget about it once the benediction, benediction is done. We are here to act like we know the Lord. Yeah, right. Right. We have to act like it. We have to carry ourselves like it. And people will see that we have been with Jesus. This respect and this admiration only come from being with Jesus. That's why we're doing Bible reading and Bible listening. We're, we're making sure that we cover the whole Bible this year because we know when you spend time with Jesus, life is made the better. Yes, the, the text says, verse number, verse number 14 says, and seeing, and seeing this man who was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against him. My final point, and I'll leave you alone on the testimony. 
there was an ultimate testimony in the fact that there was living proof of this one man that was not walking. Now he's walking. It was a testimony. It was a testimony in the fact that this man who did not walk, the Bible teaches, theologians believe that he was not walking for 40 years. He didn't just show up not walking. He didn't get hit by a car no longer walking. He was not walking for 40 years. And all of a sudden, when Peter says to him, pick up your bed and walk, when Peter says to him, go ahead and get up, trust in the name of Jesus, immediately strength came in his body. Yes. God sometimes does it over a period of time. Yes. But the God we serve is able to do it instantly. Yes. The God we serve can do it immediately. Yes. The God we serve can do it right now, sooner than quick and before right now. The God we serve can do whatever he chooses to do because he's God. We have to walk in faith with him. And when he doesn't do it immediately, we have to walk in faith with him. We have to believe it. Let me just show you something. The fact of the matter is, when you walk in faith, it means you trust him before you see it. It means you trust him while it's still going on. It, it means you trust him while you're still broke. That's right, that's right. And you still talk about it. Yeah, right. Oh, one of these days God's going to come through. Stop talking about one of these days and talk yeah. about God has delivered. God has come through because we ought to speak in faith. Because God has a way of doing things that we don't even realize. He's God all by himself. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. People say, people say, well, preacher, how can you preach this faith stuff when you ain't got it all together? Because we ought to teach it and preach it in faith. We ought to believe it even though we don't see it. We ought to believe it even though it doesn't happen. We ought to trust it even though we can't see it now. Because faith is the evidence and the substance of stuff you don't see yet. That child may not have it right now. But you keep trusting. Yes. You keep believing. We can't give up on them. Children, every last one of them, every last one of them, none of them are mistakes. Every last one of them is a crown of God. Every last one of them is a blessing from God. It doesn't, know, doesn't mean if they know their daddy or not. Let me tell you, God said he'll be their dad. Every last one of them is a blessing. And, and don't say your dad is dead to you. You need to understand that God wants you to be forgiving and loving. And God wants you to trust him to make things right. I know. I, I know men. I, I know daddies. I know mothers. They just take take over Christmas sometimes. <laughs> folk, folk travel for miles for Mother's Day. They get these big old bouquets. Mothers get whole cars for Mother's Day. Yeah. Daddy may get a cigar for Mother's Day. And when they give it to Daddy, Brother Carter, they give it to Daddy, they give Daddy stuff Daddy doesn't even need. When you see athletes make it big and they make millions and millions of dollars, the first thing they say is, I'm going to buy my mama a house. They never say, I'm going to buy my dad a house. And then they act like their mama and daddy doesn't live in the same house. I'm, I'm going to buy my mama. First thing I'm going to do is buy my mama a house. Second thing I'm going to do is buy my mama a car. Third thing I'm going to do is make my mama quit work. Yeah. Daddy's still yeah, struggling. Still <laughs> Y'all can tell me what's wrong with that later on. But the fact of the matter is, we need to understand without Jesus, none of the stuff mean anything. That's right. You can live like a queen over here. You can live like a king on planet Earth and die and go to hell. You need Jesus. The living testimony is in the book. The book says that the man was a testimony to all that God had done. My final point. There's triumph when you spend time with Jesus. Yes, there's triumph. There's temptation when you spend time with Jesus. There is a testimony when you spend time with Jesus. But there's triumph, there's victory when you spend time with Jesus. Verse number 15 says it like this. 
But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. Jesus will cause men who were once against you. Jesus will cause men who were once after you to confer on your matter. I said, Jesus will confuse men. Jesus will cause men who once was against you to be on your side. The Bible teaches that God will make your enemies your footstool. The Bible says when a man, woman, boy, girl ways please God, then the Bible says he will make even his enemies be at peace with him. Focus on pleasing God. Focus on getting with God. Focus on spending time with Jesus and watch your enemies, number one, become your footstool and number two, become favored with you. Makes even your enemies give you favor. Folk, folk don't know, folk don't know that the enemies will take care of you. Tell the story about this lady that was a real strong, powerful praying warrior. And she would get in the window every day and pray. That's when they had windows that roll up. Windows that go up, that open up. She would get in her window and she would pray out loud. And there were some little boys that would hear her praying every day. And these boys had mischief. These boys were up to no good. This woman was praying this particular day and said, Lord, thank you. And she was thanking him because she was praying in faith. She said, Lord, I don't have the food I need today. But Lord, I thank you for the food that you're going to deliver to me. Lord, I thank you that all the bread I need is on the table. All the meat I need is on the table. All the things I need are in my house. Lord, I thank you. So little boys got together and used their lawnmower money. Went down to the store. And decided she gonna, they going to fool this old lady. So they went and bought four or five bags of groceries. Rang the doorbell. And ripped and run. And they went back under that window and went to listen to this woman. And they were hiding and laughing. And the woman knew that they had brought the food. She picked up the food, put it on the table, went back to that same window, said, Lord, I thank you for the bread. Lord, I thank you for the meat. Lord, I thank you for the groceries I have. Even though you had the devil to deliver it to me. Lord, I thank you. When your ways please God, he will make your enemies bless you. Yeah. As victory and being with the Lord. So they, they, had to, they had to go into a meeting. They let Peter and John go. They had to go into a meeting. And when they went into the meeting, they came to a conclusion that's seen in verse number 16. I'm just talking about triumph. Yeah. Verse number 16 declares they went into the meeting and they conferred among each other. Saying, what shall we do with these men? Is that we've tried to stop the movement of God. We tried to stop them from teaching in the name of Jesus. We tried to make sure that, that they did not mention that name of Jesus because over 5,000 men, not to mention children, over 5,000 men, not to mention women, over 5,000 men have come to Jesus Christ behind this shenanigan of preaching the gospel good news. And now they got a man that's healed. And now we need to know from each other, what are we to do with these men? What are we to do to these men? And then they, said, they asked the question, we already know. They ask the question, we, what are we to do with these men? And then they come to the conclusion saying, indeed, <laughs> indeed being absolutely sure. Back home, they would say it like this in Mississippi. They would say, show. They would, they would say, for show, this is, the, this is a show. Uh, it says, indeed, that is a notable miracle that has been done through them and this man is evidence. They said, show sure enough, this is a miracle we cannot deny. This is a miracle that we have to accept. God is moving through these men, and God is moving in this land. He says to us today that God will cause your enemies to see God's miracle, and God will cause you to spread his word and spread the victory. Are you victorious today? Are you are you walking in victory? Are you 
you defeat it. It's your life on the rocks and things are going so badly with you until you conclude it. I'm just giving up on life. Have you come to the conclusion that I'm about ready to end it all? Have you come to the conclusion that, that I'm done with this thing called Jesus? Hold your hope, baby. Hold it right there. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Whatever you're going through, you are going through it. You're not stopping in it. You're just there temporarily. Hold your hope. Jesus is here and he's making a difference in your life. I'm talking about victory. I'm talking about victory. I'm not talking about the Texas. I'm talking about victory in your life. Oh, we are so ex excited about the new coach. We are so excited about the, the new quarterback. We are so excited about all the defensive players. But I'm talking about Jesus. Yeah. Where did it come to Jesus? Yeah. He's the only person who can give us the victory. Yeah. We have victory through Jesus Christ. Yeah. It is Jesus that makes a difference. Yeah. How you know it's Jesus? Because over 2,000 years ago, on a star hill called Calvary, yeah. Jesus the Christ gave us the victory, I tell you. Yeah. They hung him high. They dropped him low. They stretched him wide. He died between two things. They thought he was defeated. They took him off the cross. Laid him in a bottle too. But out of that Thursday morning, he got up with all power. We are triumphant in Jesus Christ. We are a people that walk with him. We are people who live for him. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Stick with Jesus. Have you spent time with Jesus lately? Amen. If you haven't spent time with him, spend some time with him. Yes. Trust in him. Walk with him. Yes. Or adore him. Because his name is Jesus. Yes. He's a righteous lamb of God. Yes. His name is Jesus. Yes. He's a horse pouring in the valley. His name is Jesus. He's a bright and morning star. His name is Jesus. He is the living of the battle. He's a sheep that was slain before the foundation of the world. His name is Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. And one of these old days, one of these old days, I don't know where I would be. I don't know when I would be what happened. But one of these old days, I'm going to get out of here. And I'm going to forever be with the Lord. The Bible says, in second, in first Chronicles chapter two, chapter 4, the Bible says, that one of these old days, at the top of God, and the voice of the archangel, Jesus the Christ, is going to move on back in here. And when he comes, he won't be in a Lexus. He won't be in a Chevrolet. He won't be in a limousine. He's going to catch a cloud. And he's going to come back in here. Jesus the Christ, the only one who can give us salvation. The only one who can deliver us. He will stop in midair. He's coming on a cloud. And the dead in Christ shall rise. And those of us who remain will be caught up with him. In midair. The Bible says that we will forever be with the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Get used to praising down here. Because over there, we're going to praise him forevermore. I'm going to join in over there. Around the throne of grace. I'm going to join in over there with the 24 beastly creatures. I'm going to join in over there. Crying holy, holy, holy. Blessed is the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. I've had toiling down here. I've had lies told over down here. I've had trouble down here. But one of these old days, Jesus is going to crack the sky. And I don't have to worry about it anymore. Over yonder there will be no more tears. No more crying. No more lying. No more backbiting. Over yonder, we're going to celebrate him all day long. There will be no need for the S-U-N sun. The S-O-N sun will shine bright. Will you go with me? Have you tried? Will you try? The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to try Jesus. When you're hard pressed, when life is burning you down, when you can't find anything to go well for you, you need to spend some time with Jesus. I had to spend some time with him. And every day since that day,
It's been sweeter. Round by round. You need a testimony. You need a testimony that Jesus is real. That Jesus yet lives. I testify today that he walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me, I am his own. And because I have a testimony, I'm triumphant. I'm not perfect, but I know Jesus. And I love spending time with him. You see, sometimes when I was growing up in, co in, in Pony League and Colleen and Semi Pro, sometimes they didn't. I had to ride the pack. Brother Thomas, say, say, didn't put me in the, in the right field every time. I thought I could really run it down in the right field. At the crack of a bat, I could run it down. But say, say, didn't put me in the game all the time. And sometimes I wouldn't even get chosen on the team in Sandlock. But I stand today to remind you and to tell you I'm on Jesus' team. Yeah. 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 And I got on his team May 6, 1980. In Miss Bonner's sixth period class, room number two, across the hall from the cafeteria. Dorothy Steele turned around in her seat and she said to me, you don't have to keep living the way you live. You can be changed. Right now, you can be changed in this room. Dorothy Steele from Moorhead, Mississippi said to me, birds don't have to fly. The sky doesn't have to open. You don't have to get up and run around the room. The earth doesn't have to quake. But what you must do is repent and believe in Jesus the Christ, that he's the son of God and he died for your life. And he didn't stay dead. He rose early that third day morning. I bowed my head in this part of sixth period class. Room number two across the hall from the cafeteria. Gentry High School, Indian Old Mississippi. And I invited Jesus Christ in my life. This is my testimony. Do you have a testimony? Are you triumphant through Jesus Christ? The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. When you come to Jesus, just as you are. Jesus is waiting. The Holy Spirit is waiting. God is waiting. It's not a hard deal for you. It wasn't a hard deal for me. All you have to do is bow your head. Believe the story. That Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead. That he's the son of God. Invite him into your life. If you don't, you think it's hot here. Hell was made for somebody, but it wasn't made for you. This is your opportunity. To get it right with Jesus. If this is you, will you bow your head with me and invite him into your life? Just say these simple words. Lord Jesus. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul in Jesus' name. that you honestly pray this prayer believing that Jesus is the Son of God that he died for your sins you are now saved that he rose from the dead and you will spend time with him if you're looking for a church home I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention in the main attraction those of you who are listening by our broadcast inbox us and let us know you want to be a part of this body
we welcome you to the new dimensions. I want to thank God for who he is and what he's all done. We serve the awesome and amazing God. He has blessed us again. And for that we say hallelujah. It is offering time. It is offering time. Hallelujah. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes offering. The sacrifice of God. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. You know, I'm going to raise your hand.
that I put on there. I said, did she have some more? <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm here with your announcements. Thank you for your participation last night at the comedy show and your contributions to Turning Hearts Ministry. You are appreciated. Today is the last day to turn in school supplies for the tornado victims in, in Mississippi. Thank you for investing in the youth of Mississippi. Please join us. A tribute to Astro's great J.R. Richard today, August 13, 2023, 5 o'clock p.m. at the New Beginning Church. On Sunday, September 10th, we will celebrate our pastor's 19th anniversary at 10.30 a.m. Father God, we thank you for those who are, who are healed, who are strengthened. Lord, we thank you for the miracles that you have given us, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for being the great physician, the confident keeper, and the comforter. Bless us, Lord, Father God, that we will see your miracles, that we will be a testimony, and these will be testimonies unto you. Bless the bereaved, and bless those, Father God, who need a healing. Bless those who have waited in a long time. And Lord, we ask you to deliver. And Lord, we thank you for the victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. For many years, we've been praying for God to send us some children, right? I said we've been praying for God to send us some children, right? Now that God has sent us some children, leave them alone. God sent them, Amen. And uh, we're just so glad that, that God has, has tremendously blessed us. I'm just still fascinated with that young man trying to catch him. <laughs> I, I'm fascinated at the one trying to catch him. I mean, maybe we need to give both of them something to do. Is that what it is? We need to give them both something to do. Amen. He's going to be an usher. He's going to be an usher. We don't make him an usher. Usher. We probably need usher with no shoes on anyway. We don't be us. Amen. 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 You have seen, you have seen on on several occasions that we are looking to to be a blessing. We're looking to be a blessing to those in Mississippi who have who have been been devastated by the tornado at the end of March. So we want to continue to give. Uh, to those in Silver City, which is in Humphreys County, where I went to elementary school. And so we have partnered with teams all over this state and others and in Mississippi to make this happen. We're teaching our young people and our children how to give to those who are less fortunate uh, than we are. And so I'm happy to report today that uh, Lizzie Hunter, who's a classmate of mine, 
and she is a Delta. She wear red and white. She brag about being a Delta. Uh, she has contacted the Deltas in Yazoo City, Mississippi, and they are joining the New Beginning Church and making it all possible. And so thank you for your gifts. If you have not given uh, for the school supplies for Mississippi victims, we will accept your money today. And so we, uh, the New Beginning Church is partnering with the, the Deltas of the Greeks to uh, make it possible. And also, we are, we are partnering with the Gentry High School class of 1981. Y'all didn't cheer. <laughs> the greatest class that ever existed. Gentry High School class of 1981. And I know when I told you all that we are going to, to make sure we deliver these gifts to Silver City, Mississippi, Everybody said, he's going to miss church again now. <laughs> but uh, that's not the case. I'm here today. But I want to welcome the president and his wife, the president of the Gentry High School class of 1981. Right. Located in Indianola, Mississippi. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm going to let my voice hear uh, as I walk up here, I, I am Terrell Thomas. Uh, I've known your pastor for over 50 years. We grew up together. Uh, this is my wife, Misty uh, Thomas. First Lady Carolyn, thank you guys. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. When we talked about those stories, y'all saw me laugh when he talked about those stories about the baseball story and everything. Right now, he, he, he got his anointing right now. He probably didn't start then on the baseball team, but as I look around and see this church and I see what all God has done in this man's life, he has that anointing now where he's in the starting lineup right now. Jesus Christ. So thank you again, Matthew, for letting us have the opportunity. But uh, I'll let my wife speak. I, I'm not a speaker. She's a speaker. I'll let my wife speak. Thank you, God. Uh, first, I want to give all glory to God uh, for us being here today. I thank uh, the pastor and the first lady, and I thank all of you, the members of the church, for having us uh, to be a part of your service today. Uh, I just want to tell you guys that when we, before the service started, the pastor showed us around and was telling us about some things that you all are doing, and I was in such awe of, of the things that God is doing through this church, and I'm, I was shocked even, and I told the pastor, I was so surprised. How are you guys not on the news for the things you're doing? Because it's not just churches say that we want to have an effect on the community and work in the community, but you guys really are. And it's even with the community, not in this immediate vicinity. And it's such a blessing. And when we see the things that are happening in this world today, and sometimes we get discouraged, but I was so encouraged today because I see the work that is happening in the youth and to come in and see the young people that were sitting up here on the stage that were part of what was happening and who are part of this entire service today. It's so encouraging to see that. And so I thank the young people for wanting to be a part of this. And again, thank you guys so much for having us today. President of the greatest class ever come through the Gentry High School. I dare say the greatest class on planet Earth. Thank you so much. We're glad to have the president in the house. Amen. And the president's wife. Amen. We're so we're so glad and enthusiastic about their presence. So he he and she are going to make sure that they get all the supplies. They receive all the supplies that you have given. And I want to thank you to our church members and our visitors for your contributions. And uh, I was there when the tornado hit. As a matter of fact, I was driving into the tornado and didn't even know it. But Mama said, come home after the, the funeral reception was over. And I did what Mama said. And I took a right and went back in the Nola instead of taking a left going to Yazoo City. And I would have to drive, would have driven right through the middle of the tornado. But I obeyed what Mama said. And I'm here to tell about it. Amen. Amen. 
these houses are flattened and their walls are missing. And so a lot of people are giving to Rolling Fork, Mississippi, but very few are giving to the Mississippi Delta down in Humphreys County. So I want to thank them for, for being a part of our gifting and, and making sure that they get it. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much. Our visitors, thank you for visiting with us today. If you're visiting with us for the first time, certainly I want you to fill out a card. If you're visiting with us for the first time, please raise your hand. I want you to fill out a visitor's card so I can call you and see if the young lady at the back door mistreated you when you came in the door. Amen. I want to make sure that the young man smiled at you when you came through the door. And I want to make sure the seasoned woman seated you well. When you came through the door. Raise your hand if you're visiting with us for the first time and you will you will be served. Amen. Amen. Uh, all minds clear, all hearts clear. Am I missing anything? Thank you again for your contributions to the Turning Hearts Ministries. We're going to take our young people on a domestic mission trip where they can be service, be servants, so they can serve. Even in the Mississippi Delta, we want to make sure that they are served. They will play their instruments, they will do their drama, and they want to encourage people. Amen. So we want to make sure that we can get them down through the Mississippi Delta up to the north part of Mississippi so they can be servants and they can also be a blessing to other people. Amen. So that's what last night's comedy show was all about raising money so these young people can, can go on a foreign mission trip. If you still have your money and have not given, give it to Sister Davis and write your check or make your your um, your cash app or your sale, whatever y'all have. Make it to Turning Hearts Ministry, Turning Hearts Ministry, and, and Sister Davis will make sure it gets in the right place. Last night, the comedian, the, the MC was also a comedian. He said, when you give, just realize, you can't say you left your wallet anymore. <laughs> there are so many other ways to give. You can't say you left your wallet. So please uh, contribute to Turning Hearts and these young people. Thank you again, young people, for your great presentation on last night. Thank you. Well, we thank God for these young people. Your best, y'all, please stand to be dismissed. Let the church. Let the church. Let the church. God, God, God. God has spoken. Yes, He has. Let the church. Let the church. Come on, sing with me. Sing with me. Let the church say Amen. Let the church say. Church. Amen. I want to recognize Sister Blanca Galvan. Thank you so much. She's our, our first time interpreter for today. Amen. Thank you, Sister Galvan. Thank you so much for, for being our interpreter for the first time. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, God, for blessing us. Now, Lord, we know, Father God, in the midst of turmoil, that we can have victory. In the midst of trials, we can be triumphed. Lord, we ask you to bless us in our going. Bless us to spend time with Jesus. Bless us that people will see that we spend time with Jesus. And bless us, Lord, that we will walk with Jesus and that we will be developed through Jesus. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only pure God, unto him be power, glory and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing by saying. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll unite the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32, you are dismissed.